Hello, everyone, and welcome back to TCU's Three Wisemen, where your three favorite geniuses give their not-so-genius takes on TCU and other interesting topics. Today, we have a special guest. Uh, like us, he is an alumni of TCU, and unlike us, he's extremely successful at what he does. Today, we have TCU tennis coach David Roditi with us. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Of course. So getting started, we uh, as, as we were just going back into history and whatnot, what was it like for you moving from individual tournaments as a young kid, then transitioning to American high school team tennis? Yeah, I mean, that was probably the tennis part was probably the, the easiest, right? You're coming from, I was coming from Mexico. I didn't speak, I didn't speak the language, moved to, to California, to Southern California to live with a tennis coach that I didn't know. He became my legal guardian. It was a big gamble. Um, so the tennis part was probably the least of my problem. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, you know, learn, learn, learn English, learn the culture, uh, get out of ESL classes as quickly as possible. Even though, uh, Ms. Fowler was, a very attractive, attractive teacher, but uh, <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, I wanted to get into the real, uh, real classes. Yeah, it, As it really, really didn't take long. Teacher myself, I can understand that. Go ahead, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it didn't take long for you to have success at all, though, um, because you won your conference singles title as a freshman. Uh, and I, I did find an article from the LA Times back way back when that was written about you uh, and basically wrote about you switching from a two-handed forehand and a two-handed backhand to one-handed on both and how quickly you did it. Was that difficult? It, it, didn't, it doesn't difficult. seem like it. No, it was. It was, it was very difficult. I, I went from being – a successful junior player in Mexico to basically re almost relearn how to play. Obviously, I had the, the mind of knowing how to play. I just couldn't do it like I wanted to. So that that I had for, that league championship that was a big deal because it was completely unexpected. I was supposed to take two years to sort of get used to my game, and we were planning for. You know, when I was 18, I would be starting to play well, and, and it, it, the, su the success did come faster than, than I thought. I, you know, I, I didn't speak English. I, I lived with a 75-year-old coach that was a single father of uh, little Adam, was like my little brother. I had no friends. I had no social life. So, yeah, I got pretty good at tennis. So, you know, my, <laughs> my Friday and Saturday nights were going to the movies to watch, like, I don't know, some 70-year-old, whatever a 70-year-old guy would want to would watch. That was my weekend. Well, hugely to your credit, Jacob and I have no social life, but we didn't become experts in anything as a result. So we're thoroughly impressed. Uh, well, having done it yourself, do you think it is easier for players who have played team tennis in high school to adjust to the college game? Yeah, absolutely. It, it takes, you know, I, overall, tennis is a very individual sport. And even if you play high school tennis, you're still, your mindset is, it's about, it's about you. It's about you getting better and, and even though you're playing high school tennis, you're going out and playing individual tournaments all the time. The, the higher the level, the less high school tennis players seem to play. Uh, it, it, and it also varies according to what part of the country. You, if you're from Chicago and you're the best player in Chicago, you're playing, you're playing high school tennis. In California, some do. But in a lot of parts of the country, they don't. So it's it's a mixed it's a mixed bag. It's um, it's a tricky transition, especially when you get to college, and you know it's just a lot. It's a lot of adjustment. You go from being a superstar to maybe you're number six on the team, 
type thing. So um, I'm sure I'm sure every sport at the college level has to deal with that as well. Yeah, that's interesting that certain parts of the country uh, play like players play. I, I'm from North Carolina and I, I played high school tennis and the guy who I, I never came close to beating, he he went to Villanova for a couple of years to play and he played high school tennis and but he was the only person who was any good <laughs> in our league. Um, but yeah, so that's that's just interesting to hear that it's kind of regionalized like that. Yeah, and, and it is um, an adjustment. It is an adjustment yeah. for our guys to all of a sudden play for everybody else. We, you know, we had it yesterday against Texas. One of our players, uh, his, his results are a lot better in individual tournaments than they are playing for the team. It's definitely a different pressure. Yeah, we we did hear though from when we had Pedro on um, a couple weeks ago. He mentioned how playing team tennis did kind of revitalize his love for the game. And I know that uh, the Cracked Rackets guys have said the same thing about Jack. And um, so so I think there is something to be said about having all of those guys around you constantly supporting you and, and having the team aspect. Yeah, it's definitely more fun. Definitely more fun. And you're yeah. playing – you're sort of playing for a bigger purpose. Um I myself, for example, the fall the fall is individual, the spring is you play for the team. If you looked at my record in college, I couldn't beat anybody in the fall. But then when it came to the spring, I would get very motivated and all of a sudden it wasn't about me, it was about me doing everything I could to help the team. And that brought out the best in me. Uh, as a competitor so it's just and then there's guys that do great in the fall and they're not as good in the spring so it's just yeah it's interesting very interesting yeah. well speaking of you kind of individually you did win the u.s under 18 indoor tournament in 1992 um and i think your indoor success never really stopped uh do you think your success in indoors then has helped you now or do you think that that you just have some magic on the indoor courts no i think that's complete uh, coincidence i was uh, i was already at tcu when that happened actually it's a long story but um no i think we won the indoors the last few years because we had great players that's that, yeah. and that has nothing to do with my with my ability to win that 18 and under tournament um We've been we've been very lucky to get to get not just good players but the right players and and good guys and uh, yesterday you know win or lose I had uh, told myself this is a great great match and a great group of guys and they're having a good time it's great to see them having fun so I think that's that's where the success comes and then Devin Devin Bowen our other coach he's really the one that makes everything happened on the court and at practice on a daily basis. Uh, the joke is I do the podcast, the podcast, I do the videos, the interviews, and then he does everything else. <laughs> it's nice. Well, to have you're a guy doing like great that. on the podcast and the interviews. So we appreciate it. Oh no, no, you go ahead. You go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say the Pepperdine coach said, Hey, how do you get the energy every year to keep it, keep it up? And, and keep it going. I said, yeah, you hired Devin Bowen. That's how you do it. Uh, he, he <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, for our listeners who don't know, in 1996, you reached a ranking of number 25 in singles and number five in doubles. I believe this made you the first TCU player to have a top 25 ranking in both. We know the competition was a little tougher back then. And despite the number five ranking, Throughout the 95 and 96 seasons, you and Paul Robinson were basically ranked as the number one or number two duo in college tennis. Do you think any of our duos that you have coached at TCU would stand a chance against the two of you? It makes me want to say yes, just to give them a lot of motivation. I, I mean, no. <laughs> it makes me want to say no. But by the way, Paul Robinson was the number one college player in singles and in doubles. So 
Oh, wow. So, I don't think, yeah, there was a lot of really good players. I don't think that that stat's quite, quite correct. Wow. Uh, That's that on me, my, then. That was my by far my and best. Jacob year. is that my was, stats guy. I'm just the handsome face. Blame him. <laughs> and no, but it, I mean, um, yeah, we were we we had success. We 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 were good. I will say, Paul Robinson and I had better results in college than any of the doubles teams that we have coached or are currently on the team. I'll say that. Well, I, I think that's our answer then. I think that's a great answer. <laughs> so you had a short, albeit successful, uh, professional career, reaching a top 50 career high ranking in doubles, um, which is kind of incredible. Like we were talking about Jake earlier this year when he had reached, uh, I think, the top 800. And just imagine being among the top 800 people in the world at one thing like you're really really good and you reached the top 50 for doubles uh topping out at number 40 41 what was it like playing and beating some of the best players in the world yeah that was uh very unexpected and in a in a, uh, a dream come true just to be able to to be in the locker room with those guys was a dream come true let alone play with them and against them and then did manage to play uh, to get a few wins in doubles against really good tennis players. That's uh, a little different skill set, and being five foot six doesn't absolutely kill you. Um, so, so did have some su su success. It was a dream from when I was five years old. My whole life was about tennis, and be able to play the Grand Slams and the U.S. Opens and Wimbledon. I was just living the dream, and I was so happy to and so shocked that I was able to do that that I just didn't I was playing every week and never really took care of my body and my body finally said you're done and it was a very short like you said a very short career but I wouldn't trade it for anything it, it opened a lot of doors it gave me an amazing experience great memories and I wouldn't be you know probably at TCU if it hadn't been for that for that career that's awesome. That's impressive. Um, in 2000... And reason, Jake, I'll say it, you know, because you mentioned Jake. Jake hasn't really gotten started yet. He's... No. he's uh, he will get a shot at being up there. He just hasn't... He's been in college. He's been limited. He's done the most that he can with the opportunity he's, he's had. And the reason he's, he hasn't had more opportunities is that he keeps getting injured and having little little issues with his body that has kept him from playing a full schedule. But when that happens, um, we're very confident that he's going to do really well. He could be the next. I completely agree. Next, yeah, like an ex Cameron Norley type thing. Wow. That's very yeah, high. I, I was lucky enough because uh, I live in London now. Um, for grad school and I was lucky enough to go up and actually watch his first final win uh, up in Birmingham against Kyle Edmund for the M25 Egg Baston or something like that. And um, yeah, he he basically worked Kyle off the courts. Um, and yeah, his, the, I mean, the match yesterday against Elliot, he just, it, it, the level between the two of them was extremely high and it was such a fun match to watch yes i i think um you know I, I said in one of the interviews or articles or something yesterday that going into that match i was more concerned about what kind of turnout we would get because i knew of the potential of that match and the level that people were going to see at the top courts you know one two and three and, and the rest i mean every court such high level and i just was hoping that people would show up and, and and get a sort of a treat and i was very pleased very happy with our fans they all showed up texas fans showed up it was a great atmosphere and the fact that he came down to the number one players for one set in front of everybody 
against the number one player in the nation. That was amazing. That was just such a treat for everybody, for all of us. We we may or may not have another question about that a little later down the list as it as it uh, circles around to the end because uh, that was a treat for us as viewers as well. Um, that being said, before we uh, before we get there, in 2000 you were the assistant coach at UT, and in 2005 you moved to Cali and were the lead national coach at the UTSA Training Center. Then in 2010 you finally got the call asking you to be the TCU coach. Jacob found a quote of you saying, every time I made a move in the back of my mind, I was thinking how it would, how it would help me become the TCU men's coach. It sounds like coaching here is something you've wanted to do since you graduated. Is that, would you say that's correct? No, no. I wanted it before I okay. graduated. Wow, oh, okay. Great answer. Well, even earlier than that, even earlier than that, I love, I love TCU and, and so, so there's so much tradition and such a, you know, it was such a, I had such a admiration for our coach, Coach Bartson. We were lucky to have such a, such a gentleman and such a, a legend be our, our head coach. And that's, I would have signed, I would have signed that next day after I graduated uh, to be the coach here. And um, yeah, I feel very lucky, very grateful that I get this opportunity. I uh so I am definitely not the more informed member of this podcast. Jacob knows a lot more than I do, and so does our other host Barrett, who's here. And the the reason they let me tag along is that I live and die for all things purple. So as much as I respect your incredible talent and what you've done with the team, I think I respect that passion for the frogs more than anything else. Thank you. I I respect yours. That's awesome. We have uh, oh, you are too kind. I'm yeah, actually having that frame of that moment you said that, but <laughs> all right. No, with that, we've got some questions from the fans. But Jacob, if you want to take the first one, yeah, actually, I do want to have one more question uh, before we oh, get I'm to sorry. questions because I kind of outsource this to the board uh, and and a couple other places to see if anybody had any questions for you. But before that. Uh, oh, I know the story of the cowboy hat, and you can see I got it on my background, and Connor's wearing one. Uh, I love it. Just, love for, it. Just, just for the people who don't know the story of the cowboy hat, uh, how did that become your thing? Well, a friend of mine that I used to coach his, his kids, uh, Roger Sheffalo, who now used to be a hobby of his to take an old hat, these hats are 50, 60 years old or, or, or older. And he restores them and cuts them and gets them all uh, fixed up. And they're, they're really cool. And he gave me one. And it's, it was a you know, felt hat, a winter hat. And I came home and I showed my current, who, Lori, who was my wife, um, now ex-wife. And I, I showed it to her. I said, look, I got this hat. It's pretty cool, cool huh? And she said, yeah, great hat. You're not gonna wear it while you coach, are you? And I hadn't thought about wearing it when I coach, but just because <laughs> shows you a little bit of our, our relationship, maybe why we're divorced. <laughs> I thought, well, yeah, yeah, I am gonna wear it. Of course I'm gonna wear it. I hadn't thought about it. And uh, just because of the way she said it. So I wore it and I remember perfectly, it was against uh, Columbia. We played Columbia and Michigan back to back. It was a little bit cooler and it's perfect for that weather. And social media, I kind of, some people made some comments about it. That was good. I'm, I'm all about marketing, all about promoting college tennis. And, and I thought, ah, oh, interesting. People like the Fort Worth uh, cowboy reference. So I'm going to wear it again. And then it became a thing. And now I can't take it off. Yes, absolutely can't take it off. And I'm like, I uh, so I'm really tall with it. I, uh, and it's become so popular that you have an entire Twitter account devoted to your hat. <laughs> yes, even though he mostly just mocks me. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a, you know, uh, what do you call it? A, um, he doesn't make me look better. He just makes fun of me. But, but you know what? It is what it is, right? Well, 
I wasn't that committed of a tennis fan until Jacob started bringing me to games, but I knew you as the the cowboy hat guy well before I even knew all that much about tennis. So I, from that marketing perspective, I'll give you some credit that it certainly worked on me. Um, on the theme of people like me who weren't necessarily the biggest tennis fans, Barrett, our other co-host, who is unfortunately not with us today, wanted to ask, uh, you and all of TCU Tennis, for that matter, are in the tennis world a really big deal. You guys have had tremendous success. So for our listeners who maybe listen to this show more for basketball or football and aren't that familiar with tennis yet, but after hearing this, want to get more involved and want to learn more about it, what would be your advice to them in order to start learning about it? And basically, what what is it that you feel that is so great about te te about college tennis that your average Joe might not know yet and would draw them in more? And that's a great question. That's a great question. There is um, there's a few things. There's a few things that I think make tennis very special. One, one is that you get to be right there, right next to the players. I mean, the players, not only are you close to them, but they play their match, they come off the court and they sit right next to you. You know, that doesn't happen in, in any other competition. So you could literally, a player plays his match, comes over to the stands and starts watching his teammates next to you and you can ask them anything you want. So the, the proximity that you get and the access that you get to the players, I think is pretty cool. Uh, you get to you really get to know them, especially if you come a few times. Um, that's one. The other is the fact that you have six different singles matches going on all at once. So imagine, imagine having six different football games going on all at once. Um, there's a lot of action. There's always something going on. And, and then when you get to understand the scoring, you kind of know – which moments and which sets and which matches are the critical ones, the ones that could turn the whole overall team score. Uh, team score. There was a, a great coach, very enthusiastic coach, a legendary coach out of Boise State, Greg Patton, and he would describe going to a tennis match, like going to a movie theater and watching, you know, six different movies all at once. And he said, you could look over here and you have a, a comedy you know the match is just a comedy then next to it it's just a horror movie it's just terrible tennis you know next to it and then you have this thriller right next to it you know so he went on to describe all these different types of movie and i think that's that's really fun um i think the atmosphere that we create where i believe that yesterday if if, if people were if they came to the match it's sort of an event it's sort of an event. And then the tennis is almost secondary. You got, you know, we have whatever, whether it's a tailgate or, or, or music on the side or, or other kids' activities. And then there's the tennis. You know, it's kind of like, uh, like when you go to a football game and you have the, the tailgating and you have Frog Alley and then you also have the game going on. So there's, there's more than just sitting there and watching tennis obviously eventually people end up really liking the tennis and 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 these guys i mean cameron nori was playing here in 2016 i mean 2015 16 17 by 2019 he was at the u.s open and you're paying a lot of money to watch him you can just come and watch jake and jack and pedro and these guys play uh, for free right before they go on the on the tour yeah, I really liked what you said about how the more you watch, the more you'll get to learn like what moments really matter and whatnot. Because I remember my first game with Jacob, he kept talking about someone getting a break and how I was looking at the wrong court. And I was like, dude, I am trying. But as you watch more, you do figure it out. And I also really liked what you said about the event. I think I said literally on our last episode or one of our last episodes, I was like, guys, most TCU tennis matches have free pizza or something like that. And it's all literally all of them, all of them. And I was like, and it's literally on your way to the baseball game. I was like, 
swing by the game will the game will hook you from there like i was like just go for the free pizza and the event and whatnot and you will get immediately sucked in after that so yeah, i like I, that a lot yeah I, I i make fun of coach sarlos i say here we are the little tennis you know tennis program with a little tennis budget and we'll we'll feed the, the fans we'll get them you know the fans will get them with the with the tailgate and get them all ready and, and all enthusiastic and they get to eat and then they go and pay to go to the baseball game and, 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 you know, get to enjoy that. So it's a, it's a pretty good deal for baseball. Yeah. And they take yeah. all our parking spots too. They do. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, cool. I'm old enough. We do, it, we do it on purpose. We do it on purpose. We have such an awesome baseball program and we know they get such a great following that when we schedule our tennis matches on the same weekend as they do, we do the, exactly what you said. We, we start an hour, hour and a half earlier, come, get some pizza, watch the doubles point, a little bit of singles, and then go watch the baseball. So we yeah. piggyback from them and, and kind of use their popularity and their success to help to help us. Yeah, that's awesome. That, that's really smart. I'd never even thought about it that way. Uh, but I, I remember my freshman and sophomore year, I think they still had the salsa limon truck that came out and uh, gave out like free unlimited tacos. And there was also an open bar. And that's what <laughs> like, I mean, I went would have gone anyway being a tennis player, but like that was just an extra perk. And uh, then salsa limon moved, which was just a shame. But uh, yeah, like the free pizza is still an awesome draw. Um, and I think especially with your success in indoors, it's becoming much more popular to go watch tennis. Um, and especially because the team is basically ranked in the top five every single week at this point. So. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun. The, the fans have been awesome. We, we believe we have a beautiful setting. Our, our facility is so beautiful, just naturally beautiful. Our purple courts are iconic, all the trees, you know, you're, you're sitting there in the shade. Yesterday was hot, but if you're a fan, you're under the trees, you're sitting in the shade the whole time. And yes, you know, for example, yesterday we had free frozen popsicles for the fans, free popcorn, free pizza, tailgate uh, outside uh, from the fans, for the fans. Uh, I can't remember what else. Uh, oh, free stickers for the kids. <laughs> it's a lot, of, a lot of free stuff. And, and we just want it to be fun, and we want them. I want we want people to associate tennis, women's tennis, men's tennis, with fun, beautiful setting. Kids can run around. You don't have to worry about the noise. There's so much room to run, and parents can can enjoy the tennis and let the kids just run around and have a good time. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Um, and I agree. The setting is complete. It is gorgeous. Like yeah. it's a it's a beautiful facility that I think TCU is really lucky to have. Um, I always yes. hear on or see on Twitter about pro players coming down to Fort Worth to train. Um, whether it be Nori, I think even Isner's been there once or twice. Um, so I think TCU is very very lucky to have such a great facility. We are. We are. It was the Friedman family that made it happen 1974. So it's a 50-year wow. anniversary of, of when Coach Bartson was hired this fall, and we'll probably do something fun. Um, you know, that's also the last time our facility was updated as well. So, so it's beautiful. The trees have gotten huge. And it looks great. Uh, uh, we'll 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 need to get do a little bit of work here in the next uh, five five or so years uh, with just our overall facility. But it's been great. It's it's so iconic. No one would ever do that. It's just a lot of land. It's beautiful. It it, it not only serves TCU men's tennis, but yesterday before the match, there must have been 200, 300 fraternity and sorority students from the from the campus playing pickleball so it's become with the popularity of pickleball it's become a very common spot for for the greek and doing functions we're doing a function we did one with the business school the neely business school with the professors last year we're doing one with some administrators with pickleball 
to it. And it serves the community. If you're a tennis player, you get to play at TCU for five or seven dollars a person. It's great. It's, so it, there's a lot of parts to that facility that make it very special. All right. This isn't one of our planned questions, and I'm interrupting Jacob to ask it. But with the uh, with the rise of pickleball, how how do you, as a tennis guy, feel about pickleball? <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 a fan. I'm a fan. You're a My fan. Brother, Yes, yeah. If you Google, if you Google the Daniel Roditi, you'll see he's. I'm in in the pickleball world. I'm his brother. Everybody knows my brother, and so I've I've played it. I've played a couple of tournaments myself. It's fun. It's um, you know, it's easy for tennis players. It's literally on day one you become one of the better players. Um, <laughs> okay. Just from being a tennis player, like Jacob, you'd be. Very good at pickleball. Have you played pickleball? You'd be very good at it just from tennis. Yeah, I love playing pickleball. It's so much fun. Yeah, so it's it's great. It's it's. Uh, I think it's good. It brings out people to the tennis facility. It it, it has sort of re-energized the whole industry in a way. So I think uh, it's more of a embracing each other and helping each other than one versus the other. There's, an, there's another sport that is even more popular than pickleball in the world, and it's coming. In the next three years, you'll hear about it, and you'll probably, we'll talk in five years, and you'll tell me, you were right. First time we heard about padel, padel tennis. You can Google it, P-A-D-E-L, padel tennis. Uh, it's coming, and it's going to be as popular or more popular than pickleball. It's, um, yeah, it's very, it's somewhere in between pickleball and tennis. That's coming. And that, I think that's all great for, for the tennis industry, and it's great for families. Um, I, I have this vision of, of on, on football days, on game days, you know, we close the tennis facility. I think we should open it up and have tailgating inside our facility and playing pickleball. Because so I think families would love to tailgate, play pickleball, and then go to the football game, and then come back and play more pickleball. I think that'd be a lot of fun, and I think it could really showcase our facility and 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 just get people in it and and make it very welcoming, very very in, inclusive. Um, and we just want people to enjoy our beautiful facility. It, it's there for a purpose, and and we're that's sort of always been our 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 mindset and our philosophies. Come, we'll we'll feed you, we'll entertain you, we'll get you drinks, whatever it takes. Just come and uh, have a good time at the tennis center. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but moving on, you said that this year is the 50th year anniversary of of the center, and uh, it hasn't been updated. That was actually a perfect segue into one of our questions from a member of the sports board. Uh, this is Les Get Froggy. Uh, he he wants to know if if there are any discussions going on about a new indoor facility, maybe one with cameras for the people who can't necessarily get to the indoor matches but would like to watch. Correct, correct. So yes, when we talk about our facilities, there is a huge discrepancy between our outdoor versus our indoor, and people have accused me of being an idiot as to why do you guys keep winning the indoor nationals you'll never get an indoor facility if you keep doing that why would they <laughs> Obviously, so, so don't do, do it but uh no it's it's definitely it's definitely conversations you know the the environment the environment the athletic college athletics as you know it's just it's probably changed between when we started the, the podcast until now there's probably some new lawsuit that's going to affect uh, you know, the, the finance, the finances of college athletics. So I understand, I understand the challenges for our school, our administration, our athletic department. Uh, we had to, we had to get football. We had to get basketball. We had to get baseball, everything updated and up to sort of that big 12 national standards. I believe we have done that. So I'm hoping here in the next two to three or four years that we, we do have a new indoor facility and uh, you know updated outdoor facility, but it's you know it's not it's not easy. It's going to require for 
those uh, fans and tennis fans and tennis alums and friends of the program, I'll be calling you. We're going to need your help because uh, we're definitely uh, falling behind in, in that respect with other schools, and it's going to it's going to affect our recruiting. It's going to affect our our results. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so the answer is of, yes, we are. Our, yes, we are. Okay. Love it. Speaking of affecting your recruiting, uh, we have a question from member of the sports board back in. With tennis being so global, how do you go about finding such great players with such a low miss rate? It seems like every player we bring in ends up contribu contributing in the lineup during their li during their time here, and there are hardly any transfers out. I don't know of any transfers. Well, that's what he was yeah. saying. He, he was saying, yeah, I, like, I, how do you have such success doing that? And have such a low miss rate? So, well, that's where Devin Bowen, Devin Bowen comes in, and he, he does an amazing job with the guys that we have. We've been lucky with who we have brought in. We put a lot of value in the recruiting process into the character of the players and how much do they really love tennis. And when you love tennis and you're willing to, and you have the passion for it, you're willing to sacrifice for it and you want to get better. And, and that's what, so that, that has worked in our favor, but at the same time, it's it's a lot of luck that that we're getting the right the right guys with the right attitude, and they bought into the culture, they bought into the the system. Devin Bowen is an absolute machine. He is impossible to say no to, and he's he has such a great way. He loves tennis, and he was the hardest worker I've ever known as a as a player himself. He got to thirty nine in the world. Um, just purely on on work he he wasn't the best athlete or had the best tennis skills but he just outworked everybody else and he's brought that in to our guy our program and it's you know someone like jake fernley i think i've said hi and good morning to him a few times in five years and it's been a hundred percent Devin who has just stuck with him and worked with him and and Jake and him have this unbelievable relationship. And to see Jake where he's at, I, I know that not only his parents are very proud of him, I am very proud of him, but Devin. Devin's like a like a coach slash parent of Jake. And to see what he did yesterday was just unbelievable and, 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 and so happy. So yeah, we've been, you know, as part of it is luck. We look for to to get the right guys. Um Tennis world is very small. If there are red flags, we do our best to stay away, no matter how good the the, kid, the players are. Um, everybody seems to know everybody, so you do your best to get the right characters and the right the right players out here. Yeah, I think what you said about work ethic is is really key to TCU because even Cam Nori, he's not necessarily the most athletic guy on the tour. Yet when I watch his matches. You can never get a winner on him. He's he's always getting the ball back and always running. And I remember last, I guess it would be two years ago now in the Wimbledon that he went to the to the semis. It was always his work ethic that got him through those matches, even even when he was playing the four or five setters. Um, and I think that really is indicative of the TC program in general. Correct, correct. And that's you know obviously, like we said. First thing we talked about on the podcast, being an individual sport. So at the end of the day, these guys, all the success they get, it's 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 on them. We do everything we can to help, but it's on them. And Cameron, his ability to move, his ability to 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 lock it down mentally and absolutely grind his opponents down. Uh, his endurance is off the charts, and his competitiveness that made him into a top 10 player in the world it's just we couldn't be more proud of him and his coaching staff who's facundo who's also a tcu guy another tcu graduate it's great I, we get a lot of comments people love seeing him on tv and then they show the the players box the coaches box and all you see is purple and tcu everywhere 
we love that. We think that's awesome. So it's, uh, you know, it's this little private school right in middle Texas here and, and uh, getting worldwide uh, acknowledgement is, is so fun to see. Yeah, completely agree with you. Um, we, we do have another question from back in. Uh, and this is, has NIL had much of an effect on the way that you recruit and maintain players? Yes, yes, yes. So fans, call me. Uh, well, not me. Our collectives, Flying T, it's the same, same as baseball. It is absolutely happening. And it's starting to happen, not just with American players, but they figure out how to, how to do it with, with foreign players uh, here pretty soon. So it is, it is college athletics today. It is, uh, it is what it is, whether we like it or not, or whether we agree with it or not. Uh, one is the rule, one is like, what is it turned into? We can get into that whole argument, but it doesn't matter. If you wanna be at the top, you, you gotta get it. So, we, so yes, our, it, is, it is part of the, of the recruiting process. I, the number one recruit in the in the country went to SMU, uh, and I I assume a lot of it had to do with with that. Yeah. So that before we move on to our next question, anyone listening, take that as a sign to go donate to the Flying T Club right now. Yes, it does matter. Yeah. Um, tell, them, tell them it's for men's tennis. Yes. Yes. Um, then we've got a question and we promise we won't hold you much longer. I think we've got three questions left. We've got a question from life of a frog who wrote in, you are recognized by many as a coach who does things the right way. Many coaches do, but there is also some dot, dot, dot gamesmanship shown by other coaches around the country. Uh, how are your lineups set and how much are co coaches able to manipulate them throughout the season? I feel like we see time and again, when teams play us, some of their top players suddenly fall to the bottom of the lineup to try and gain easy points against us. Yeah, it is. It is definitely, it's definitely a choice that you make on a daily basis. And um, Devin Baldwin, again, Devin Baldwin, even if I wanted to, Devin Baldwin would never allow it. Uh, we, you know, you look at the values of TCU and, and creating these worldwide leaders of character and values setting. It, it's, um, we continuously remind each other of the big picture, the big picture, the big picture, because it is, it is very tempting. I, my brain, my brain sees the, all the ways that you can circumvent any situation at all it is it is a blessing and a complete curse uh because i i get that game i played it as a player i knew exactly i knew the game within the game i i was like a street like a little street player um and and it, and it helped a lot it, it's you need, you need to do that tennis is a very personal sport it's you against me jacob you probably know that there is always a game within the game and and this, whether it's the lineup or whether it's making your own calls, I mean, think about it. Our players are not just playing the game, but they're making their own calls. They're calling their own lines. Imagine basketball guys calling their own fouls. Can you imagine that? I mean, it is, yeah. it is incredible. So, so the, the 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 nature of our sport it was funded with sportsmanship and value centered. Uh, philosophies that's it, it is part of our game and you know some coaches may feel differently and and it's okay we we we've lost two teams like that in the past and uh, I just know that 40 years from now when some of our players come back with their kids that's what they talk about they talk about how that has helped them and, and be ready for, for the big picture. So, uh, yeah, you know, we can talk about it forever, but we're, we're proud. And, and again, Devin and our leaders, our athletic director, our chancellor, our president, that's how they run the school. So uh, we just keep that in mind and, and, and keep the big picture in mind. And 
if it means a few less losses, that's okay. Um, but uh, but uh, we know we're, we're, we we sleep very well at night, and and that's and that's great. That's a, a lot of value to that as well. Yeah, it makes you proud to be a horn frog. Absolutely, very proud to be a horn frog. Very yeah. proud. I mean, it's, especially you know, right here on my phone, have all my teammates and alums, tennis alums, checking in before and after the game. So not only do I have to, we have to produce as a team, but also my personal buddies will give us a hard time if we don't do it the right way. So. It's Which your personal buddies giving you a hard time is more motivating than anything. Most of my success in life is just trying to not have Jacob text me something giving me a hard time. <laughs> well, that's part of the motivation, right? That's all. Exactly. It all adds. And, uh, it's just been fun. And, and Devin, you know, Devin's also a horn frog. He was my teammate for two years. And he's the reason why I came to TCU. I wouldn't have come to TCU if it hadn't been for Devin and his dad, who basically were the ones that helped me come to TCU. So it's, it's a whole full circle. It's been a great, great run, and we're proud of where we are, and we just got to keep getting better and, and find ways to, to stay relevant and find ways to keep up with the, you know, the schools that have, every, that have everything. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of relevancy, uh, we have another question. Um, I forgot to write down who this one was by. Um, okay. Realignment has been the theme in sports over the past few summers, changing conferences. So uh, with that being said, what are your thoughts on Big Ten tennis? <laughs> I heard, I heard, is this because, are there rumors going around? Somebody else asked me about the Big Ten all of a sudden. Yeah, there are rumors going around that TCU is an option to join the Big Ten. Okay, well, um, I don't even know what the question. The realignment is it's it's sort of scary. I uh, I'm a big believer in focusing on what I can control. Definitely nobody's asking my opinion as to what we should do as a university. It's a that's thank God. Thank God I'm not it's not up to us. But if, if that's the case, then we'll we'll uh, you know we'll get to play indoors definitely more often, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, there's amazing, amazing programs in that conference. But I, I love the Big 12. Uh, I love the leadership in the Big 12. I, I feel like some of the decisions that were made two years ago when everything looked so uncertain and we brought in our new president of the Big 12, he's done an amazing job. So I, I love it. And they're here, right here in the Fort Worth area. So... Um, yeah, I, I hope I hope we stay, but it's it's not my my decision. But um, you know, in the meantime, with all the additional teams to our conference, we we're gonna get to play in altitude, and that's a big difference. I don't know, Jacob, if if you ever yeah. played in altitude, but it certainly makes a difference when you hit the ball that you have played your whole life, and it goes in, and all of a sudden it flies a little bit longer, and it's out. It does create a challenge, so that's oh, yeah. a new challenge. For us. And, uh, we dealt with it when we were in the Mountain West, and that's something that we're gonna have to deal with it again with Tucson and, and Utah and BYU, a little bit in Phoenix, just very little Lubbock. Um, so yeah, we'll have to deal with altitude. I I have to say, I think my favorite part of that question is that whoever it was wrote it in thought there was any chance that if these rumors are going around, the news was gonna break on this podcast today. Like asking it here was going to make any difference. Um, but I will say, I'm glad you brought up, uh, like you're talking about the old days. I, I mentioned earlier, I, I was born and raised a TCU fan. I, I bleed purple. And with that comes a violent hatred for all things burnt orange. So for our last question, how freaking good did it feel to beat UT yesterday? <laughs> well... I, uh, I I I totally understand your how you feel. <laughs> totally, you know. I was a coach at UT. That's where I started my co college coaching career under an amazing mentor, Michael Center. I was assistant coach there for two years. So, so I, you know, they were they were good to me. They were good to me, and um, I'm friends with Bruce and their coaches. 
and our guys and their guys. These two teams have faced each other so many times in the last four or five years. Yeah. I feel like I know their team almost just as well as I know our team. Uh, so there's a lot of respect, uh, mutual respect, and I think you know our guys would agree that that we would want UT to succeed. But but there's something about the overall feeling that even when I was at TCU, somebody reminded me, one of my ex-players, all decked out at UT, one of my ex-UT players came to the match yesterday, all decked out in, uh, in UT gear, and he said, do you remember that the first match when we played TCU and you were at UT, you wore TCU underwear underneath all your burnt orange? And I'm like, that is our coach. I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, but he said, oh, no, you did. You showed it to the whole team after the match. Uh, <laughs> now that I, I, uh, I made it uh, very, uh, very no known where my loyalties uh, were, and I'm just proud. I love, I love what TCU has done. I love where the school is today. You know, I was here in the 90s, and where the school and the athletic department has come from the 90s to where we are today, the leadership. It's been incredible. It's been such a fun ride, and all the all the sports are doing so well. Look at baseball, what they're doing right now, undefeated with that schedule. It's ridiculous. It feels so good to beat them. It does. It does. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean we don't respect them. And again, I have a little burnt orange in me. But yes, it feels amazing to be able to beat them, uh, especially knowing that there's absolutely nothing that they don't have, you know? They get everything. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that doesn't win tennis matches, it doesn't win football games, it doesn't win. It's You play with your, with your heart, you play with sweat, tears, hard work, passion, and that's what gets you the Ws, not, not the bells and whistles. Well, yeah, I speaking of... Uh... Oh, yeah, speaking of W's, I do want to say thank you on a personal note. Uh, my entire family went to Wake Forest. And when I say entire family, my mom, my dad, my sister, uh, three aunts and two uncles all went to Wake Forest. And wow. so when we matched up against them in the indoors, I was excited because I could have something to hold over their heads, but I was also extremely nervous because they would have something to hold over my head. And so I just want to say thank you on a personal note for beating Wake. Uh, that made me so happy. <laughs> yeah, you, and on another you person, are thank you for coming on our show. This was absolutely fantastic. We cannot thank you enough for taking the time to talk with us today. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's, uh, as you can tell, it just... I can talk about TCU all day long. Anything you want to talk about TCU, uh, very proud alum, proud and lucky and fortunate and grateful to be in the position and have the guys that we have and have the bosses and the leadership on top and fans and people like you that are taking the time to talk about TCU tennis. Thank you so much to you and keep telling your friends to come to tennis matches. They have no idea how much we appreciate it. Our guys just absolutely love it. When they look up and they see all those fans that are supporting them, it makes them feel special. It sort of validates all the work that they do on a daily basis and all the sacrifices. And we cannot thank everybody enough for their support. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, I think, that's about all we have. Yeah, so thank you everyone for tuning in to your uh, favorite podcast with your three favorite geniuses, Jacob, myself, and our stand-in for Barrett, the best genius we've ever had on the show. Thank you all so much. Uh, you can follow us at TCU Three Wise Men on Twitter. Subscribe to the show. Hopefully, we'll have more content. We'll always be talking about tennis because that is probably our favorite topic we have here. Thanks to Jacob and the guys he's been able to get us on, on the show, culminating right now. Thanks for everything. And go frogs. Go frogs. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>